I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is Sam IT, the juxtaposition of IT and business. And we're going to go a little bit more into the CDK situation that's been going on. What's hard to believe is since we made the last video, it's been nearly a week and the outage is still continuing. At the time of this recording, it's still out. I don't know if it's been restored since then. The rumors we're hearing is that CDK is going to go and pay the ransom. Now, this is pretty shocking for a lot of reasons. One, it means they're publicly going to admit if they actually do this. Of course, it's still a rumor. If they do this, they're publicly admitting that they didn't have real backups. Of course, real backups are heavily segregated from their traditional data. And even if they did have that, it also implies that they didn't have redundancy of backups. We would expect them to have local backups that are completely isolated from the original data, but also we would expect them to have uh, offline or uh, cloud-based backups or something that is completely separate, maintained by a separate company that could not be compromised in this way. And this is important, could not be compromised. If you're using something like file locks on uh, Backblaze or Amazon, there's reasonably no technology on earth that's going to breach that. If they did, it would be a breach of the entire cloud-based storage mechanisms. And this would be a piece of news so much larger than the CDK disaster. So basic cloud backup procedures are essentially guaranteed to have not have happened or they don't know how to restore from them, which is basically the same as not taking a backup. And we can assume there's just no plausible way that they had local backups because the ability to also encrypt local backups simply isn't reasonable. While it's not completely to this range of being absolutely impossible, it borders on it if you have true backups. So for all intents and purposes, what we know at this point is that CDK doesn't have local backups, doesn't have cloud backups, hasn't followed the slightest uh, necessities of a production environment. They did not see this data as production unless and this is very important because we're hearing that they're going to pay this ransom, which, of course, is illegal. Paying money to an extortionist is not legal. And in this case, this is really important. There is no plausible space in which we can claim that there is an accident here. We have been through this. We've been through it for years. We have decades of training, industry knowledge. There is no person who can claim to be an IT professional or a CEO who hires an IT professional who can make the claim that they were unaware of the absolute criminality level of incompetence that would be necessary to implement or accept a VPN, administrative privileges on the redundant uh, on the resultant uh, application being installed, or any of the other pieces that cause this or not having backups. Right, We've got three different spots that are unacceptable and are a red line. There is no situation, none. Or it is okay to have implemented any one of the three. All three indicate we have over and over again shown just from the public information. We have no idea how many mistakes were behind the scenes. Did they not have passwords? Did they write them on monitors? Did they advertise it in email? Was this entire thing just everyone's desktop was wide open and someone clicked on an email? Those are the kind of assumptions that we have to say are very, very reasonable because they are lesser mistakes than the three red line mistakes. No person with any business or IT training should ever have entertained the possibility of crossing those lines. This is beyond professional negligence. This requires sabotage. There's no reasonable way that we can look at what we know of the CDK situation and say this wasn't intentional, which means that this is not a payment to a malicious third party. It means that we're looking at open money laundering. The agency that did this, we have to assume, is in partnership with CDK and not an enemy outside agency. If they were, we would have had information about how the backups were done. They would have been more public. It would have been no VPNs. There would have been no administrative privileges. All these kinds of things could not have happened, right? And they would be talking about how the breach was so beyond anything that anyone could have anticipated. But we aren't hearing those things. What we're hearing is we know that they were wide open. They were inviting. There is no other way to put it. It was an invitation for ransomware, and then surprise, the ransomware happened, and now surprise, money is flowing out of the country, very likely to an enemy state who's going to use that money to fund a military action against the United States. That is the expected behavior. This is, if you were to write a textbook on how to launder money in this day and age, this is exactly how you would do it. This is set up from day one to be designed to make money laundering through this mechanism absolutely the 
obvious go-to expected thing. And here we are, exactly as we would have anticipated and have been warning for a decade, not just with CDK, but every company that is doing this kind of process. Right? These are things that everybody in the industry has been drilled for professional generations, meaning people who've gone through education of this, gone through their, their journeyman process, their, the senior process, where all many generations know that these things are beyond unacceptable. Nobody can try to pretend they didn't know. Right? And even if someone never got that education, these are items, and this is why like a CEO is culpable here. These are items so major that it is not reasonable that any person acting as a C-suite advisor, any lawyer, any accountant, any CEO, CIO, CTO, CFO, all have a responsibility for understanding that these things logically make no sense whatsoever, right? You don't need to be technical to know that you've exposed everybody to the same things. It's like walking into a doctor's office, everyone is sick, no one's covering up their mouths when they cough. You know you're putting yourself at risk. You've created a situation where you're gonna spread disease. You send your kids to kindergarten, you know they're gonna get you know, the flu. That is stuff that you know this is a business and those people had to take a calculated risk. Well, this, this software is so valuable, we don't care if we get shut down, we don't care if our data is stolen, we don't care if the money we pay is used to fund terrorist activities. That's what we have to assume is being done with it because that is the obvious thing. Everything else we were able to predict, this is just the obvious, right? There's no weird, there's no outlier, that is the obvious. As IT professionals, we have responsibilities. CDK has shown how important it is that when we overlook, and someone came on my channel and said, why weren't you, well sure, Monday morning quarterbacking, why didn't you warn people before this happened? I have a book from years ago that warns people about this. I have videos that warn people about this from many more years ago. I have thousands, literally thousands of posts and articles warning about this, and I am just stating what is standard knowledge in the industry. No one needs me to have warned them, and no one needs anyone to have warned them because basic IT knowledge, basic common sense should have protected against this. How could this have happened? That is the question that the authorities need to be asking. How could they be considering using this as an opportunity to funnel money to a criminal organization? That is unthinkable. And you need to think about if you're buying cars, is the money from your car going through this process and being used to fund, fund something illegal? That is a very big possibility. It has to make us question our buying as as people who are witnessing this happen, this is a really, really serious issue for everyone at every level of society. So more information I'm sure will come over time, but what we've learned in the last week is that they are not in a position to use backups that they pretend that they had. And now the suggestions, every rumor and every behavior we've seen since then is that they have no ability to restore from backup, which implies they never had backups. Anyone who makes the claim, well, they just encrypted the backups as well. This suggests a widespread either disinformation campaign or a broad uh, misunderstanding of what a backup is. And especially if we had Amazon, if we had Backblaze, if we had Wasabi, if we had tape, any standard mechanism for that last level of protection, none of this was possible. And if we had normal backups, anything that qualified as a true backup, none of this was plausibly possible theoretically possible, but no known situation in all attacks in all time has this ever been breached. The only way for that breach to be plausible is if the backups were coupled somehow with the original data and coupled data by definition can't be a backup. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the work that we're doing here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. If you have more information about the CDK situation, are you down? Are you fighting against this? Do you have people who are trying to defend their actions and say that they were actually taking backups, that they actually, it's good for them to be paying uh, extortionists and sending the money that uh, dealerships have been paying them to an outside entity that they don't control and is illegal? Should the FBI be looking into this? Get down there in those comments. Let me know what you think, and I'll see all of you next time.